Well, ladies and gentle people, uh, the end of the wings. So we're not quite the end of the wings, the covering. So you've wetted them down each side. You let it dry out. You check that it's got no warps in it. Okay, if you've got a warp in it, wet, wet that part down again and set it on something flat with a weight on it and it'll take the warp out. Now you need a little bit of washout on these wings, which means that you need this part here to be slightly sticking up. So what you do, I'm just gonna point you down a little bit. Okay, what you do, uh, you get yourself a oops, piece of your bolster there. Can you see that? Hang on, there you go. So you put a weight on it and you, you put a bit of balsa just on that very edge there like that. Put a weight on it and that will naturally dry out with that bit of wash out in there. Okay, it just helps to stabilise the, the model in flight. So the next thing to do uh, after that is to put your dope on, which I've done, and I've saved the rest of it, so it's over there now, out of reach. The mixture, 50-50 dope, 50-50 thinners, and that's for, I'm gonna save that now for uh, doping the fuselage with the fuzz, if you like. So, um, the next thing to do is to put the wings together like that. Well, I'm not gonna do it just yet because I wanna get on with the fuzz uh, and I wanna be able to put this aside so I can let it go off without it being disturbed. So what you're gonna to need to do there is you can, now, what was the measurement? Three quarters of an inch dihedral. Now, three quarters of an inch dihedral in metric is 19 millimeters, or if you like, 1.9 centimeters. So what you could do, uh, does that mean under each wing tip? Yeah, under each wing tip. So you could always double that up, uh, which would be 40, 46, is it 46 mil? And just do it like that, 46 mil, that'll work. Or you can go the whole hog and put 19 mil under each one and do it, do it that way. Either way, I don't think it really matters. So they've been doped now. Um, the dope's, dope's gone off, it's as tight as a drum. There's no warps in there, or I should say wrinkles, no wrinkles in it. So it's all in the prep, it's all in the prep. As long as your prep is all right, then uh, everything else will be all right. So that's the wings done for now. Put those to one side nice and safe. So what's next, well, what's next is the fuzz. Let's see if we can be a bit better. Okay, there we are. So you cut out all your through keels and side keels and your formers. These are the formers here. Okay, and you, you, you pin everything down and glue it in place. And then you start with F1, two, three, four. Leave out five for now because the wing's got to go through there and it'll have to go straight through the middle of F5. So don't make the mistake of putting F5 in until you've got the wing in. I've got a pin there, I want to get that out. There you go. So, and what I did to make sure that they're going nice and uh, vertical is use my block. Let's put a block in there like that. And another block in there. You know, or you can, Use your metal 90s, put your 90s in, and that'll keep them perfectly, perfectly vertical. So the next thing to do is to cut out the rest of the uh, formers and put them on the other side. And that's gonna be a bit more tricky because you can't just lay it flat like that. So you're just gonna have to rely on your, on your skills there. You might get this sort of bending and flexing. Well, once you've got these side keels in, I suppose I haven't tried this yet, actually. So I uh, probably won't fit them. You can always put these in temporary. 
to help out and then glue them in later just to keep them things in some sort of order that's where the side keel goes anyway it look like that and your wing slots in uh, so yeah I'll put the other side in so that's what I'm going to be doing next and uh, I'll catch you up in a minute so just to quickly demonstrate my solution to putting the other half of the uh, formers together is if you can get all of these blocks they're very cheap and good to use is place your frame like so at 90 degrees put some glue on the former and while it's still setting place the other metal block on top that then levels out the whole thing and makes that former 90 degrees to that body and that's how i do it okay so let's carry on with the rest of the build so where have we got to okay so the wing is in now I have to say, there's not really much to go on to, to see whether that wing is square or not. And I don't think I'm really going to know properly until it's it's finished. But uh, anyway, um, what I have done now is pre-sprayed the, uh, the wing. That bit of whiteness there, that's uh, the remnants of the, uh, the foam kicker I've been using. But uh, I'm not too bothered about that. Uh, that'll probably just wipe off, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that will just wipe off, so I'm not too bothered about that. So, when you come to put your side um, pieces in, your, your side keels, it's the opportunity to make sure you're getting the fuselage straight uh, and, and everything's in line. Uh, so when you know, you're confident about all of that, then that's the opportunity now to put all your stringers in. Uh, the front here has a solid balsa and the rear has a solid balsa. You've got to be careful with the rear because don't forget you've got that slot there for the elevator or the horizontal stabiliser if you like. So you've got to be a bit careful with that. But so far, uh, this is where we are. This is what is known as the engine box. If you can see that, there's the engine box. Uh, maybe I'll tip that up a bit more. Hang on, there you go. So there's the engine box there and that's where you're... Uh, rocket motors going now mentioning rocket motors these are the recommended rockets that you're going for uh, this is the type TSP L2 uh, this basically replaces the um, the old-fashioned motor which will look like this okay that has a spring that goes in there and that's what originally would have been used but uh, that's another video um so there we are with that so i'm now going to put the stringers in and uh see how that turns out and then i'll put the, the block in and uh, sand it all down and hopefully i won't break it i've had to put a little packer in there because uh, f5 well actually some things on here don't actually fit very well but I've had to put a packer in here for F5, so you might end up doing something similar. Anyway, there you go. So there's no real way I can see of getting the uh, the wing in deliberately first go straight. So I've had to semi guess it. Uh, a little bit of a failing, I think, in the design there. But anyway, there you are. And uh, let's see what happen what it looks like next. nose cone right so looking a bit bedraggled it's 32 degrees centigrade in Fahrenheit or American temperatures that's probably 300,957.8 or something to that effect anyway so we're doing the um, the Porsche jet for the Vinci's model company I, I always get that wrong so I've had to read it 
because I say something different usually. And basically what you're going to end up with is, I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, no, no. Okay, I'll turn the camera. Basically, you're going to end up with that. Can I get that into shot? There you go. You're going to end up with that. And I'm doing it on me cheapo lathe. So how do we how do we get to that? Okay, if you haven't got a lathe or whatever. In fact, you don't really need a lathe. They just say you have to have one. But what you do, you get hold of the drawing, takes your measurements of the pulse jet. And what I like to do, I like to make a template. So what I do then, I get some half inch, because that's what I've got on the shelf. Doesn't You don't have to do this in half inch, you can do something thicker. Get some half inch bolsa, soft bolsa, and I draw it on and then I cut it out and I get two pieces. And then what I do is, um, just use that as an example, you sandwich those two pieces together. But first thing you must do, I haven't got my chisel with me, I've got my chisel with me. No, I don't know where I've, where I've put it. Anyway, I put my chisel down, draw a centre line, Get your five mil chisel or quarter in America, quarter uh, chisel, and you carve out a groove in the middle on both sides, okay? And then you test fit an all thread rod, which is what that is on there, an all thread rod. That particular one's eight millimeter. I did actually want to use six, but I couldn't find any six, so I had to use eight. Probably just as well. So then what you do is, once you've got a groove on either side, you actually glue that back to, well, not back to, you glue it together, okay, in a sandwich, okay, and when you know everything's thick enough, you then put the rod in, some washers, nuts and bolts, either, either end, and you can put it in something like a drill or a, a small lathe, and you can turn it, okay, but what you want to do before you turn it is glass paper or shave off the right angles, because you're going to make it harder for yourself. Okay, and uh, then you'll be able to get that down to a shape. And then what you do then, once you've got it to the shape you want it, um, you get some uh, sanding sealer, thin it down with uh, cellulose thinners, put it on, let it go off. It takes take long, maybe uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, then you get some very fine glass paper. It's not sandpaper, it's glass paper. Really, come on. Anyway, uh, this one's uh, a 1500. And you just rub it down. Okay, because you, you're sealing the, sealing the pores in the wood. Okay, then you put another coat of sanding sealer on it. Okay, and then very lightly go over it with glass paper and then what you can do is get your cellulose dope which I have on the shelf behind me and you cover it in dope and the reason you do that is because you want to put some tissue around it ready for priming and painting and then you put some thinner on it that goes through the tissue melts the dope and the dope impregnates the tissue and then you let it go off, okay? And generally that's a, a good way, a little bit of practice to get that done. So I'll just give you one more shot of that. Uh, okay, so this is what you, you're trying to get, you're trying to get that shape there, that dimension, using that as a guide, okay? There's your guide, look. Okay, and then if you want to, once you've taken it out of the, uh, drill or the the lathe is to hollow it out as best you can at the front probably wrap some uh, some glass paper around a pencil or something or use a drill and just try and get as much of the weight out of the the front end this end here as you can uh, just to make that few grams lighter 
and because uh, that's it's, it's a dead weight bait it doesn't do anything it's a dummy uh, pulse jet so there you go that is the pulse jet okay it's time to say goodbye